Hi, I'm Jill Abram, Director of the Collective Malika's Poetry Kitchen. We were really looking forward to coming and performing on board the Golden Hind and hope we'll be able to do that in due course. But in the meantime, here are some of the poets who were going to perform for you at the end of April. They are Katie Griffiths, Rishi Dastidar, Charlotte Ansel and Peter Reynard. And they've all got books available, so look them up and buy their books. Oh, and I've snuck one of my own on the end as well, recorded a while ago in the days when we were still allowed to go outside. Hope to see you soon. Enjoy the poems. Last year, the French author and TV presenter Yann Moir kicked up quite a controversy in France when he declared that he couldn't possibly love a woman aged 50 and that women of this age and above were invisible to him. My poem is written inspired by that thought. You are Bible and not much thumbed. It's not that you disgust him. Any page can wrinkle or bore. Any curved spine points to the bookbinder's floor. He just prefers the body of a younger woman. Whose, you want to know? Lame joke, po face, preferable. He is 50 and cannot love a 50 year old woman with encumbrances. And for encumbrances, read your decade glass figure. The body of a 25 year old is extraordinary, worthy of devotion. Yes, you recollect novice monks, their ink bites gold in your neck. The body of a 50 year old is not extraordinary at all sticking to the script, sad as a Sunday rota. He is not responsible for his penchant, nor his wild oats, nor anything pastoral, nor dog-collared men who bang on. Funny, isn't it, that it's your body he presses his palm against to swear this truth, that when he is 60, he might be able to love a woman of 50, or maybe 44, definitely 31. Suck it up. You are Bible and bone loss and fall on deaf ears. In my pocket is the moment I woke up with you stroking my left bicep. Gentle alarm clock, a well-practiced image of intimacy from a red eyes soon again stranger. But it isn't. Time and touch leave nothing apart from a memory. Hi to anybody that's watching. Uh, this is a poem that I've recorded for the Golden Hind virtual gig and it's called Containment. He says, there are three things that always look worse than they are, water, oil and blood, which may be true, but the river shouldn't insinuate its way inside our hull blooming febrile tendrils into concrete. We're not so naive as to suppose there won't be some, or why have bilges? So far, it's a trickle, not a flood, a dim maze revealed, puzzling through crevices, stubborn against the mop, but even as I wring it out, the 
pattern grows darker, like a negative in the fixing bath, or those magic pictures the kids used to have where brushing with water called forth rainbows. There are no portents now. He has been waist deep in the canal, sticking milliput into rivet holes like the Dutch boy at the dam. His heroics stem nothing. We're not going down just yet. It could take weeks or months, but steel was supposed to hold. It's not the big things that capsize us. It's the creep, the slow fall, the peck, peck, peck violence of a dripping tap, the seep of our youth, the tide going out, drowning in an old friend's silence. Everyone needs to feel held, contained by a vessel without holes, however small. No one needs the kind of life that leaks like a sieve. No more so than when tortoise shelled, you carry your home with you and live on water. Thank you. Hi, my name is Peter Reynard and this poem is called The Fall after a film by Jonathan Glazer. The men, faces masked, look up to the man who clings to the tree. The rustle, the rustle, sweet oak, you know. The gloaming year shouts about, shake the tree, see the leaves, shake him down, see him drop, the men they know, you know. Bark and dance, there he lies, a shiver, a ball. Gather round, dance and punch, stretch him out, thumb his throat, smile at the flash, snap, snap, the men they know, you know. Snatch him up, loose his neck, the stench, the hole below, the falling rope, the hissing rope, the weight of the man, the smoking rope, against the wood, its lash in the dark, the men they know, you know. Look down at the gloom, the dark below. Ghost of the fall, the silence below, away they go, the men they know, you know. Square light above, the gleam of his face, the stretch of his legs, make steps of the hole, arms that will hold as he goes. He climbs to the light, the men they know. He climbs to the light, the men they go. He climbs to the light, they think they know. You know. Thank you for watching. If Martin Luther King had been a postman, he would still have had a dream. But instead of sharing it with all the world at once, he would have told people individually household by household, as he walked his walk, delivering letters and ideas. And they would have spread his words, neighbour to neighbour, over garden gates and hedges and cups of tea. And he would still have made a difference.